And thank you, Hala, and to the team at the Metro Chamber for inviting me to participate in this discussion. We're in a pivotal moment in our country's history, and I think in our city's history. I started the gathering spot in the wake of another murder in our country. I was working at a law firm here in Atlanta, and it was the summer of the Trayvon Martin case. And, and I got an email from some of my friends that said, what are we going to do next? And my response to them is what I do now. So what I tell folks, what the gathering spot is more about than anything else is community. We're not in the space business. Our focus is on trying to make sure that we connect people with uh, to one another. Our goal pre-COVID and during COVID was to inform, encourage, and again, make sure that at the very, on a very fundamental level that we did the things necessary to make sure that this community of folks in Atlanta knew each other. Our youngest member is 21, our, our oldest member is 88. About a third of our members identify as small business owners. What I've seen over the last couple of days has humbled me. We have invited activists on the front lines of uh, the work, many of those that you're seeing on TV, to meet with some of the biggest entertainers of our time, folks like Usher, to talk to members of the tech community, and everyone in between. What I've learned during that time is that we have a lot of work to do to make sure that the future of this city is strong. There are a couple of hard truths about Atlanta that I think that we need to acknowledge. One is that we're the capital of income inequality in this country. The history of the civil rights movement, while it needs to be def definitely respected, is not enough to carry us forward. We have to think about new solutions and, new, and have new conversations in order to get to the other side of these issues. For many people in this city, the situation before COVID wasn't good. And it's something that I think as I go through the rest of my comments, we're going to need to acknowledge. So what happens when you combine the worst economic event in our lifetimes with now another visual reminder of the systemic racism that it exists in our country? It's important to remind ourselves, and I say this to myself all the time, there's an old Frederick Douglass quote that says that the thing worse than rebellion is the thing that causes rebellion. Now, I can't say as a business owner, that the looting and rioting is something that I stand in support of, but it's important for us to put that activity in context. Again, we are the capital of income inequality in the country. The activity that we saw this past weekend, to me, is more of an economic response than anything else. While the media paid a lot of attention to the stores that were looted, like, uh, and particularly the luxury stores like uh, Gucci and Louis Vuitton, we also saw spaces like Target and Kroger rated. And the reason why, right, is that we can see that after nearly three months of little to no economic activity in many communities, that folks are struggling. What we witnessed was the outcry of a community that's not been heard, but also has little economic power. But I believe that we can change that. We as business owners and as business leaders have the ability to start to make changes that I hope will lead to future generations not having to have this conversation. So how do we go forward? To me, the answers are in two different solutions. The first is in our treasure. As was discussed previously in this call, the symbolic acts that many companies are, are pursuing are important and should be noted and respected. But again, given the economic crisis that exists in our city, those actions are simply not enough. We have to begin to treat the actual illness and not the symptoms of this problem. So statements, social media posts, even donations to current efforts uh, to, to help uh, individuals uh, that, that need to be uh, uh, from an, uh, from a, excuse me, from a bail, uh, they need to be bailed out and uh, 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 helped uh, from, a, from a legal perspective are, are necessary and should be applauded. But we need to be honest in that they do not change the economic circumstances of those protesting or for anyone else that wasn't there. Our economic and our, and our economic activity and our capital needs to be given directly to efforts to try to sustain and aid people in our community that simply do not have the means to continue on. 
I can't say it any more plain than that. So in addition to the contributions that our companies are making, we need to think about new efforts and new contributions that can be made to other organizations and people that will sustain them. The second thing is to look at talent. It is very important that, that many of our companies continue the diversity and inclusion efforts that we already have. But we must recognize that our companies will not be able to, especially during these economic times, out hire this issue. We have to empower another generation of black owned businesses to also grow in this city. How do we do that? That we become a customer. We work with these businesses as partners, making sure that they also are part of the economic activity that has made this, this city very, very strong. I've seen some very bad stats, some stats that suggest that even 90% of black owned businesses don't have a single employee. I've seen other stats recently that say that 70% of black owned businesses may not make it to the end of this year. For us to be able to create the economic engine necessary, we're going to have to make sure that these businesses survive and then begin to thrive in addition to our diversity and inclusion efforts internally. So I'll conclude by saying I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because I believe that the solutions to many of these problems can be found in this room. We understand business, we understand economics, and a lot of what we're witnessing can be solved with economic uh, solutions with us working together intentionally to make sure that everyone is included in the future of the city. If we don't, what we're witnessing right now, I'm afraid to say is just the tip of the iceberg, but we can avoid that because we as a community have always been able to stand together but standing together now is going to require us to have tough conversations that we haven't had before. So I appreciate this, uh, this platform and, um, and look forward to continuing to build uh, more community with, with uh, the companies and leaders that are in Atlanta.